mix up my ketchup. What's going on y'all, it's girl Eve. Literally sitting out here on the bus stop, eating some McDonald's fries after I just took this hour long walk. <laughs> it's almost an hour to walk down here to the good McDonald's. I woke up this morning just like, I don't know, craving some fries out of nowhere. <clears throat> I'm really eating out all week or not much of last week either. So as my body was just like, so are you gonna give us some type of salt and sugar and MSG or something like, um, what? We in withdrawal. So I walked on down here to the McDonald's because I like to take a daily walk anyway. But as I was down here sitting on the dirty, dusty bus stop, um, eating my fries, it just occurred to me like what it really means to be free. What it really means to be a free black person. And I, and I know that seems like unnecessarily deep, like sitting on the bus stop. But I think until you go somewhere where you don't have to hold yourself a certain way anymore that's the only time that you realize that all this time you've been holding yourself a certain way so this is the bus stop right it's dingy it's weeds over there and i'm just sitting here just eating my fries and then it occurred to me you would never do that at home like never and why would you never do that at home eve it's not just because you're just too bougie to do it i mean yeah i am a little bougie but at the same time, I wouldn't do it because of what other people may think of me. It really would be a situation where I wouldn't want people to look at me a certain way so I would never sit outside and eat my food because that's ghetto, right? That's what we're socialized to think. Just sitting and eating your food. <laughs> that's ghetto. That's what hood black people do. You don't do that. And so when you think about that and you say to yourself, okay, so I would never do that for... Um, for fear of what people would think. Then you have to delve a little deeper and say, okay Eve, what people are you talking about? <laughs> and the answer is, let's be clear, white people. Like, you don't wanna be perceived as that kind of black person. So you're not gonna sit outside on the bus stop and eat your food. <laughs> and it occurred to me how exceedingly fucking toxic that is that I can't even just sit outside and just eat for fear of what a random white person that I don't even know may think about me and my character for just eating in public. And then it made me happier to sit here on this bus stop and eat my damn fries around a bunch of other black people who literally don't give a damn about me eating my fries. Because they're going about their life and they do stuff like, you know, this dude is across from me right now sitting on a tree stump like, smoking a cigarette, drinking a bottle of water, minding his damn business, being free as hell and black as hell. Like, I don't think you realize how freeing that is until you just go somewhere where people just do it and where they just live their free life and they don't give like two shits about what people are thinking about them and how they're doing it. Like this dude right now across from me is um, sitting in the back of a pickup truck cause his folks just pulled up to the laundromat. <laughs> Like, oh, he just hopped out the back of that truck, child. He got on some pink slippers. He got pink slippers on sitting in the back of a Dodge pickup. See, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Just people just living their damn life. They don't care. They care about what? Care about what? And then that really occurred to me like, Eve, all this time you've been doing these things or afraid to do these things or holding yourself a certain way or walking a certain way, having a certain posture, talking a certain way, not eating your french fries in public. Hello? Because of how you've been indoctrinated as to how white people may view you. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. I'm having like a lot of epiphanies along the way in this journey. This um, first 35th. Oh, speed off. <laughs> okay. Peel out. Peel out. Um, this first 30 days in St. Croix family has honestly been very um, instrumental in me being a lot more introspective and really taking notice of what I do, why I do what I do, how I feel, um, what kind of person I am, you know? 
and um, and adjusting myself accordingly so that I can really be just a free ass black person. I just wanna be free and black. <laughs> and before anybody asks me, no, I'm not locking my hair. I did a twist set on my hair just because it was hot. Your girl needed to feel her scalp. I haven't found a barber out here, so like my sides is wolfing and I had my clippers and everything packed up. I could have sworn, I could have sworn that I packed a set of clippers because I got two sets. I could have sworn I put a set in my carry-on luggage. Or at least, at the very least, in, I'm gonna go back and look at my suitcases. I could have sworn I put a set in my um in my check luggage but i haven't been able to find it yet but then again the room is kind of small so i haven't been able to like really pull out all pull out my bags and like pull everything out and all of that so i've been like pea smelling going through my bag but um i'm not locking my hair i twisted in my hair like this and the intention was to then take these and pluck them out so it'll be curly it'll be like a curly mohawk situation on the top um but i couldn't do it yesterday uh, or i wasn't going to do it yesterday because um hurricane or sorry tropical storm laura was coming through here and she was not about to mess up my curls yeah and on the subject of freedom um i would never wear my hair like us i would never make wear my hair like this out in public back home I would always have on a hair wrap. If I had my hair set or something like this, I would always wear a hair wrap. But look at me, just free as hell. Out here on the bus stop with no damn shape up. Living my best life, okay? That's it, so later I'll talk to you guys about the eco village that I plan on building down here. Um, as you guys know, we're um, buying an acre of land the acre of land that i'm buying is surrounded by um by like six or ten other acres of land that nobody lives on it's, they're 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 sold like people own them but um nobody lives there so we'll pretty much be the only ones there um and the name of the village that i'm building is called Sharut, which this is my sabbath so i guess this will be partial sabbath lesson um, Sharut is the uh, Hebrew word for uh, freedom and more specifically it means liberty or freedom from slavery. It's not freedom in the sense of free to do whatever you want to do. It's freedom in the sense of freedom from oppression, um, which is similar but not exactly the same. Uh, it's the freedom to worship how you want to worship, uh, live how you want to live and be under God's law. Um, but be free from man freedom from the slavery of man so I look forward to um, sharing that with you guys as we put that little eco village together um, and we begin to bring people into it I'm planning for that to be up and going by January God willing um, and I look forward to bringing that to y'all but in the meantime I'm going to sit here and eat my fries in peace by my damn self free as hell and black as hell and if i want to be a little bit of ghetto ghetto as hell too and that's okay y'all be intentional about your day i love y'all have a great day